Hello and welcome. We're going to take a first look at Adobe Illustrator. Once you have the program open, we're going to create a new document. We can either do that from this new file button at the left or by going to file, new. You can see some presets here, which you can also click to find more presets. With this new document window open, you'll see there are some saved presets such as mobile dimensions. You can also view more here. Web, print, etc. Adobe Illustrator also comes with some templates if you're curious to try some of those. For now, we're going to choose the letter size. And here at the right, we're going to change it to inches. There is a document title here. And we're just going to keep the standards, which are CMYK and high resolution for print. Go ahead and click Create. Within the application, we have an application window right here, which is our main artboard. For most of the exercises, I'm going to have you change your workspace to a default. And up here at the top right, you will find there's an icon called Switch Workspace. I want you to click on that and go to Essentials Classic. If for any reason you or someone else have made updates to any of the toolbars or panels, go ahead and click Reset Essentials Classic. And that way we'll have consistency with the window panes and the tools visible. So to the right are your window panels and panes. And to the left is your toolbox of tools. So to the right, let's look at some of the starting window panes. I'm going to go ahead and expand mine. You can see as I hover over to the left side, there is a double sided arrow so I can expand that. And now we can more easily see here to the far right, we have an expanded window pane for properties and libraries. If I zoom in, you will see there is a double left caret and a double right caret. I'm going to close the Properties and Libraries tab, collapse it by clicking on those double carrots. And that way, when I'm working, I can get as much of my workspace horizontally. You can decide how much or how little you would like the rest of these window panes. Once you become more familiar, you may want to collapse them smaller. You'll notice when I click on one of the window panes, if they are grouped together, so for instance, you can see with this border that these tools are grouped, this window has both of those panes available. If I click on the swatches, you'll see all three of these are grouped together. You can change which of those are grouped by clicking and dragging. You can also unattach a window panel. So you can keep multiple panes open at the same time. Next, let's go over to the left side of the application where you'll find your toolbox. And if I go to the very bottom, these three dots, it'll say edit toolbar. And when I expand that, this is kind of a little cheat sheet to show you what these tools are. You'll notice that some of these tools have a little arrow in the bottom right which means there are multiple tool options within that icon. So for instance, text type has all of these sub tools. So with the expansion of this toolbar, we can hover and see the label for each of the tools. And you can view that in list view up here at the top, or you can see them in thumbnail view. So list view will give you the text description. Above that, I do want to mention there are screen modes. If for any chance you accidentally tapped F on the keyboard, you'll notice it will change screen modes and some of your panes may be hidden. On the bottom of my screen, I do have a screencaster open if I happen to hit a short code and not mention it. We will talk more about each of the specific tools as we progress in the lessons. Next, if you're on a Mac, I would like for you to go to Illustrator and Preferences. If you are on a Windows machine, this the preferences will be found under Edit, and at the very bottom you'll find Preferences. 
I'm going to go to general just to open the window. And there are typically not many adjustments I make to this. If you have a personal preference, you may want to go to user interface. And here you can decide what your interface looks like. I just typically use the dark interface with a white canvas. Or you can have the outer area match the interface. I keep it white if I should need to sample white quickly. You can also change some other interface settings. Again, not something I change. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to get out of that. Some of your main navigation within the application are you do have a scrolling vertical sidebar and a horizontal bar here at the bottom. If you've lost your document, the shortcut to get back is Command-0 or Control-0 on a PC. If you forget any of the short codes, View, Fit Artboard and Window. And here you can click and zoom in or zoom out. But for some of these essential navigation tools, you're really going to want to try to remember the shortcuts. So for view, zoom in, you can see right here to the right grayed out is the shortcut. So for zoom in, it is command plus and zoom out is command minus. So I want you to find on your keyboard command or control on a PC and up at the top near the delete key to the left of that, you're going to find your plus and minus. And if you remember that right next to the minus is your zero key, just hit command zero to fit your artboard within the window. So that's going to be much quicker than going and clicking individually under view. To pan around the artboard, if you hold down the space bar, you'll notice that my icon has become a hand. So with the space bar down, you can click and drag the artboard around. So sometimes as I'm designing, most often I will be designing off the artboard and then I will grab it onto the artboard for whatever I want to save that's visible on the artboard. So it's really helpful when you zoom in to pan around your document. If you have a scroll wheel or you have a scroll trackpad, you can scroll up and down, left and right on a trackpad to maneuver around the artboard as well. You will notice that right now I have a black arrow selected on the screen. So my cursor is a black arrow. That is my main selection tool. You can see when I click and drag, there is a dotted box showing my selection area. If I were to draw a rectangle, over here is the rectangle icon. And if I go to the white arrow, which is next to the black arrow, this is called the direct selection tool and the shortcut is A. So if I zoom in and I'm on the selection tool, I can click and independently move this anchor point of the object. So if I have the black selection, it's selecting the entire object. If I have the white arrow, I can individually select anchor points. If I'd like to select more than one anchor point, I will hold down shift and you can see those anchor points are selected because they are filled or solid, whereas these anchor points are unselected and they are white. If you'd like to deselect the point with shift still hold, held down, you can deselect and with holding down no other keys, I'm just going to click and drag that point. You can see if I shift select another point, now I'm moving both points. I can use my arrow keys on the keyboard to move those objects. I can move them left and right, up and down. If I want to make a bigger movement, I can hold down shift and use my arrow keys. Or I can always use my mouse and click and drag those. I will click off the object onto the artboard or the rest of the workspace to deselect the object. So you can see when it's selected, it is highlighted versus when I click off the object, nothing is selected. With the black selection tool, if I have more than one object, I 
I can use the direct selection tool, the black arrow, to either click and drag to highlight both objects, or I can click on the object independently. I can select both objects or multiple objects by holding down shift and clicking on multiple objects. So that's a little bit about selection, your main black selection tool and your direct selection tool to select individual points.